Good morning, guys. My name is Luke. Welcome to Ruth Farms. Today, we're going to start burn down on our corn ground using our Wilmar 745 up here. Let's get at it and get something done today. The world is ending. The eclipse is happening. Oh my gosh. <laughs> So what we're looking at here, this is what's going to be one of our cornfields. This is just like an acre here, right here behind the bin site, right behind the tractor shed. Um, what y'all can see out here growing, this is our cover crop. We, we broadcasted, don't think I got any of this one on film, but we did plant some cover crops on film back in the fall. Uh, but yeah, this is some of our cover crop. This was some wheat we had left over. Um, I just broadcasted this and we actually ripped this ground or subsold it and I don't have a ripper. but. Rip this ground and I just hit it real lightly with a disc to break up the clods. So we're going to hit this today with a burn down uh, using Paraquat and Roundup. We're using, it's a pint and a half of Paraquat and then I'm doing a quarter Roundup. Uh, I'm doing the Roundup just because sometimes when I have burnt down with just Paraquat, um, I haven't got a, a great kill and I want to go ahead and get a good kill and that, that roundup will just make sure I get a good kill for the stuff that's down on, on down in the canopy a little bit. Um, last year I sprayed roundup and 2,4-D about three weeks ahead of time, but this year with the cover crop, I wanted to let the cover crop grow just as long as it could so we get as much biomass and organic matter back onto the soil as we can. Um, so that, that's the reason we're, I've let it grow go this long. Um, my hope is to hopefully start planting some corn here in about maybe a week. I'm going to burn this down and we got some rain coming later this week so we'll see what that rain does and uh, Lord willing if we can get that and get the planter ready. Uh, my neighbor's going to let me borrow his planter again this year. If we can get all that ready then um, I'll come back in here. We'll probably go ahead and plant it or I'll spray it one more time. We'll spray it with at atrazine and if we need another shot of Gramoxone we'll put another shot of Gramoxone. They allow us three shots a year uh, for pre-plant but Hopefully we won't need it again. Hopefully this one shot will kill everything and then the atrazine will take care of the rest. So we're gonna get at it. And hopefully within a couple weeks here, we're gonna have some corn growing or corn in the ground anyway. We're a little bit ahead of last year. Last year I didn't get my corn planted until it's about the end of April. <coughs> I say we're ahead, we haven't planted it yet. So that ain't the case, but we got Wilmar loaded up here. I've already tested it out on this field to make sure everything's gonna do good. So let's get spraying. Y'all can tell right here if it, if it put, put, picks up through the camera. You know, this is some pretty pretty healthy cover crop here. You know, it's probably at least 16 inches tall. We spread chicken litter on here probably been two weeks ago now, give or take. And uh, it's really made this wheat take off. So we got some good biomass here. Uh, hopefully I'm able to plant through it successfully. Uh, we don't have uh, row cleaners on our planter, on my neighbor's planter. When I buy me a planter, I'm planning on uh, getting row cleaners on it. It's just his. He don't have them on his. Uh, we we thought we'd found us a planter, Coleman and I. Went and looked at it. And I told the guy, it was raining the day we went and looked at it. So I told the guy I would like to uh, come back and look at it whenever it ain't raining. Maybe that weekend. Well, the next day he done took a deposit on it and sold it. So I, I can't blame it on him because it, you know, I should have went, went ahead and spoke for it if I was that interested in it. But, but anyway, probably just going to use the neighbors again. He's out of tractor, so he's probably going to use my tractor to plant. I'm going to use his planter. So it'll work out for all of us, hopefully. GPS ready here. I've done some adjustments on it. Put my receiver on the front of the hood. Um, this is an articulating sprayer, so the GPS on the roof didn't work that well because anytime I reacted, it reacted the opposite way kindly. And uh, everything I read online, if I put it on the front of the hood up there, it should work a lot better. And just from what little bit I sprayed over here, it did look like it helped. So 
let's do it to it. Probably seven, eight, nine acres here around the house. Got it sprayed. We'll head over now to our uh, Smith Farm, which was kind of our CRP ground a couple years ago. Um, it's what y'all got to see me spreading litter on here a week or two ago, part of it. Um, we're gonna head there now. It's about 15 acres there. It's about three, four miles from the house. We're gonna go spray it, and then we'll make our way back here. We'll go to the Low Place Farm. It's about 20 acres there, and then if I've got enough time, I'm gonna run down there to the new ground we picked up where we're gonna have full season soybeans. I think there's about seven or eight acres down there. We'll try to get them sprayed because we'll, uh, you know, we'll probably try to plant beans here in about a week, probably two weeks, within two weeks maybe. I'd like to get them out around that first of May area, maybe a little bit earlier. We'll just see how the weather goes. Get my corn done first. Get them done and hopefully we'll have a good crop this year. We're gonna do all we can. You know, our prices are low right now. A lot of people is kind of down in the dumps, but you know, it's part of farming. We gotta do it. I know I can't really say a lot because I, I work full time, that pays my bills. I know a lot of people, you know, farming is what pays their bills. So I'm praying for you guys, don't get me wrong. We'll make it, we'll get through it. We just got to hope and pray for a good, you know, good weather this season. Being inputs are high and our output or our, you know, what we're gonna make is gonna be low. We just gotta hope we get a good, a good rain, a good bunch of rain this year. That way, that way what we put in will be worth it. Hopefully we will. So far we've had a wet spring. Hopefully to keep it up. My wheat's looking good. Uh, the low place farm wheat is starting to lay down in places already. I guess I just put too much nitrogen under it, too much chicken litter, so I'll have to remember that next year, not put quite as much. <laughs> Always something. Let's get over here to the Smith Farm and get her sprayed, and then uh, it will be ready to go. So we've made it to the Smith Farm. As y'all can tell out here, we got a beautiful green color. There's a bunch of grass of some sort out there. It's pretty. Don't get some of them little yellow flowers get that picks up on camera out there, but. We're gonna turn her brown here in a minute. We have about 40 acres this year that's gonna be corn ground. Which uh, last year I had 25 acres. You know, I'm a very small farmer here. I grow, um, I'm up to about 75 acres of row crops this year. We have about between 25 and 35 acres of hay ground. Then we have cattle, uh, you know, small small flock of sheep here at the house for my wife. You know, we just, we grow some hay to sell. We, we're just doing enough trying to get our farm built up, trying to build our name up a little bit. And, you know, just do what we can. We don't have a big fancy equipment. I really probably got more than I should have for no more than I'm farming at this moment, but I'm hoping one day to grow and get a little bigger. Smith Farm, headed back home now, I'm gonna fill back up. Uh, we got 20 acres of the Low Place Farm to spray, and then I've got about, between about seven and 10, I think it's eight acres, um, new, new ground we picked up. So we're gonna go check it out. We'll get filled up. Uh, Sierra, my wife's cooking me lunch right quick. Uh, she works out of town sometimes. She's going out of town this week. She's gonna fix me lunch before she heads out. We'll spend a little time to eat lunch together, and then I'm gonna head over there and try to get these two patches sprayed. Uh, luckily, the wind has stayed pretty calm. We got Smith Farm done, it's about 15 acres, and then we got this around my house done, which is around seven to eight acres. So, we're getting a little bit accomplished this morning. I can't get much accomplished. Some of these big farmers are big sprayers. 
especially not as much as you people out west, because y'all fields are huge. <laughs> we farm little garden patches here in North Carolina, but we're getting there. See what happens and see if we can get down here a little bit. So I just got all my chemicals put in the sprayer there. I've got my bulk tank here. It's an 1100 gallon tank. I fill it up with water. Then I use our uh, pump here. It's the inch and a half pump to pump it from the tank to my sprayer tank. Um, we just mixed enough to do 17 additional acres of, along with what was already in there. So I need to get about 500 gallons of water inside this sprayer tank. So look up there, we got marks 100, 150, 200, 300, 400, and 500 somewhere right above that little square right there. So nothing fancy, we just kind of our best estimated guess we can get. They do make you know things to go off of, but uh, to go in line in your in your water line that way you know exactly how many gallons you got. But we're not too fancy, so we're just gonna take our best estimated guess. And it'll be close enough for burn down anyway. So we was able to pick up, I went on and picked up all of our Grimox on. Should be enough to do at least all of a burn down. May have to get a little more to finish up. We got our atrazine, which will go before corn. This is our residual. This helps keep weeds from coming up. And then we picked up our corn. We went all Pioneer this year. We got, uh, this is a 1464, which is like what I had last year. And I'm pretty sure this other one is a 1289. Uh, trying two different varieties this year. Hopefully they'll do good for us. But see what happens. It's about time to eat some lunch here. And then get back at it and try to get done. Well, we're here at the uh, low place farm. Our cover crops <laughs> is growing pretty well. About knee high. Uh, a little bit of this was oats. Most For the most part though, it's wheat and uh, a little bit of uh, cereal that I mixed in. A little bit of other junk coming in there as well. But we're going to kill it today. Make some good hay, but want the micro corn ground do better. Hopefully, this will help our corn do good. Sprayer used to have a uh, in row nozzle, but. They took it off before I bought it, and I hadn't ever put one back on it. So. Turn her down. We're going to turn this from green to brown, and then turn her back green again in a couple weeks. Low Place Farm, one of our home farms. Family owned. I'm excited to see what this particular field will do. I think we'll have a heck of a corn crop. Putting out 20 gallons the acre here. Grumoxone and uh, Roundup glyphosate. Try to kill this grass, wheat, and oats, and everything else down. A little bit of weeds coming in here, but it's pretty pretty clean. That amazing what raising the cover will help. Just hadn't done good enough, didn't get in the good enough stand. I think we planted a little too late. 
So instead of oats, we're going black corn. This is all right. It's a wide open place over here. I know theirs are weak. So to clean my sprayer out here, right now we're pretty much empty. There's a little bit of foam in there. It's what y'all can see down here in the bottom of the tank. Um, I just sprayed out 99.9% .9 of it. But anyway, I'm gonna put some water in it and put all my, all my protective gear and I'm gonna get in there and try to spray the insides of the tank as good as I can. Get anything that's on the side walls and top of the tank, wash it onto the bottom. If we leave it on there, it'll stick and then it's harder to get out later. I'm going to wash all that out good, then I'll take it down here, rinse what little bit of water's in it out, come back, do it again, and then the third try, I'll fill it up about, you know, maybe a fourth of the way with water or something, and I'll put that cleaning solution in it, and then let that sit overnight, and that'll take care of the cleaning out the booms and the valves and everything and help with the tank. The world is ending. The eclipse is happening. Oh, my gosh. No, but for real, it's getting weird out here. Y'all can't pick it up on camera, but it's a, it's a weird haze, that's for sure. Probably ain't showing up, but I mean, it looks like the, it looks like it's about half over already. I don't know what time it's supposed to start or anything, but it's happening here in North Carolina. Very weird. It's been about, probably about nine hours since we sprayed this. And, Y'all can tell she's already starting to hurt. Leaves is already curling, turning turning brown. There too, this will be a brown field. That paraquat's strong stuff. <laughs> it does, does a good job. Be careful around it, guys. Even those who've messed with it for years, you know, can never be too careful.